Hi, it's uh, Alex Housley here from Selden. I'm checking in from the very cool Rise uh, podcast room uh, to give you a quick update and demo of Selden Deploy, our new uh, enterprise platform for managing um, machine learning deployment workflows for data science teams, typically in large companies. So um, I'll kick off just by sharing my screen and uh, walking you through a uh, quick uh, rundown of the features, and then we'll dive into a demo. Okay, so uh, Selden Deploy uh, is really paired with our open source product, uh, which is all about serving uh, machine learning uh, models in production. What, we, what we're doing with Selden Deploy is uh, providing a new interface uh, which enables data science teams to manage uh, the team workflows. Uh, so, for example, uh, when a data scientist has uh, requested a model to move into production, there'll be someone in the team, like a team leader, who's responsible for putting it into production. Uh, so there would you know, be approvals and audit trails related to those uh, approvals for compliance purposes. Then there's ex advanced experiments, so you have things like A-B tests, which you'd be familiar with, uh, more, but more advanced versions of these experiments like um, contextual bandits or multi arm bandits, uh, which dynamically adjust uh, the models that are selected in production uh, based on the ones that are currently performing best. Uh, then we have the canary tests, so uh, the kind of thing which big you know, enterprise companies do, like Facebook, big consumer companies, I suppose, like Facebook, also big enterprise companies, uh, they, uh, when they have a new version of a product, uh, in this case, it would be a model, uh, they release it to a small percentage of traffic and then uh, evaluate the performance. And if it's working well, hasn't fallen over, and is delivering the results here, it'd be that they expect, uh, they can then do a rolling update. Uh, then there's model explanations. So as many of you will know, uh, machine learning models uh, are typically uh, you know, very hard to interpret, uh, particularly um, you know, neural network based models. And uh, uh, so effectively they're a black box and uh, it's uh, uh, becoming increasingly uh, important to provide uh, human interpretable uh, sort of responses to why a certain prediction or decision was made. And uh, that's gonna be also become particularly important for uh, GDPR, which is coming into force, so there's ex explanations, uh, but then also having better model um, lineage and uh, audit trails to refer back to. Uh, so we actually have um, uh, actually it's over 80 companies signed up now, including lots of big brands. And what I'd like to do now is walk in the demo. Okay, so hold up, and we'll just go into uh, here. So. So this screen, this is actually just a, a set of links to the various screens, so this won't appear in the final product. Um, what, but I really want to you know, start to kind of communicate uh, what we're building here uh, and start getting your feedback. So first of all, you know, like any good uh, tool that requires an identity, uh, you will log in. We never had login on, on the previous uh, uh, software, although we collected um, you know, newsletter subscriptions and registrations that way. Uh, people can uh, sign in, and the reason they're signing in is uh, they are collaborating uh, across projects with the team. So uh, what you see first in the middle here, which I will um, do a, uh, uh, which I'll build for you, is a, it's a, a deployment. And uh, uh, what you're managing within your team are, um, are, are projects. So these projects uh, can be for various different use cases. For example, a currency predictor or a credit risk um, project. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new project. And this project is a currency predictor. Uh, I'm the owner, and I have team members that can be data scientists. Uh, they could be internal team members, or you could use this to um, uh, collaborate with external uh, contractors. Okay, so we've created a new project. What you would do then is manage um, deployments. Okay, so this is uh, the first screen of, a, um, uh, of the deployment uh, canvas. It's a blank canvas with a new deployment, and this uh, DE1 is an Icelandic currency fluctuation um, deployment. 
we have short names throughout to uh, to make it easier to uh, to manage sort of an overview of, of when you're looking at an overview of the models. You can add in some descriptions, some you know friendly metadata, and attachments um, that are relevant to that model. So it could be uh, R and D uh, documentation uh, or notebooks, and uh, then you'd go ahead and add a cluster. So the clusters um, are actually our seldom core um, kind of Kubernetes clusters which you would use to serve the model. And uh, you can have these running on, uh, uh, on prem or in your favorite cloud platform. So it works on you know, Amazon, AWS, uh, Google Cloud, and, uh, and Azure. And what you're seeing here is different uh, environments. So you'd have some clusters for live, some for staging. You could have different regions, different departments. OK, so if you can drag and drop C1 uh, live uh, cluster to this deployment. And then let's go ahead and actually create a predictor. OK, so a predictor, first you could uh, add a predictor from your published library. But actually what we'll do here is we'll create a new predictor. So when you drag in a predictor, what you uh, can add then are models, combiners, and tests. OK, so in this case, what we'll do is we'll add in a model. And the models are populated by your uh, Docker registry. So the company has a private Docker registry where the data scientists are uploading new models and new versions of models. And you can specify here the compute resources required for those. We then go ahead and, um, and deploy that. And there's a state of unpublished or published. And actually what I'll walk you through is a much more sort of formal approval process uh, in this demo. OK, so we've uh, created a deployment. What I quickly want to show you is how that would become an A-B test, because that will give you a better understanding of what is a predictor. OK, so we can now add a test. If I drop that test on top of the model, it's branched it out. So you have both a model and um, uh, M2. And then you can compare that to another model. If you drag and drop another model in, in this case, it would be M3, which would be another Docker image containing another model. It could be a model created in the same uh, framework, TensorFlow. It could be a TensorFlow model versus a PyTorch model. That's one of the real benefits of being uh, framework agnostic. OK. One of the other things, other things you could also do in, in here is drop in a combiner. Uh, so a combiner enables you to create an ensemble where you aggregate the output of uh, multiple models. OK. So um, we have a live uh, deployment. And we want to create a canary. Okay, so a canary is where you are testing a new predictor uh, to see its performance before you uh, uh, move it into full production. So we click Add Canary. You see on the left-hand side we can add a predictor and design it in the same way as we would, um, you know, the, the live predictor. And you basically basically can um, uh, manage the the, the, the load between the two, or balance the load between the, the, the live and the canary um, by um, customizing, updating the, the number of replicas. So if you had two and two, 50%, 50%, or you can adjust it to have more traffic um, uh, on either side. And then when you're happy with um, doing a live update, you can do a rolling update. Okay, so in this case, we can deploy the canary. Okay, this is deploying. And now it's successfully deployed. OK, so uh, uh, what I'll show you now is a, um, uh, an audit trail. So overall, this is a, a, a summary view of all the deployments that are uh, active for a particular project. Actually, this is showing you really all the possible states. So you probably wouldn't see them all in exactly this format. But this just gives you an idea for you know the different states that people um, the, the deployments have. So you have things like awaiting approval here, DE6, DE9 is deployed, uh, but then you have uh, DE16 that has a an active live um, predictor P15, and then there's P16 which is kind of um, has an, an error at the moment. So if we go into one of these, uh, this one is you know the Icelandic currency fluctuation uh, predictor we built earlier, and you can see that there's this neat uh, activity feed. Uh, which has been you know, created by each and every action that the team members have, have um, uh, had within the system. And also, there's, you know, if there are any other action uh, events that have occurred, like an error, uh, this, this can be flagged up here. 
So in a way, this is a, a little bit like um, a Slack for machine learning ops. It allows uh, team members to kind of quickly add comments or notes um, about uh, any of the events that have happened. Uh, so it might be the case that uh, a model is awaiting approval and Gominda is uh, out of the office. So someone can send a message to say, hey, why didn't you speak to Max, for example? Okay, and then um, we go into the next screen here. This shows you a breakdown or a uh, audit log of, of all the events that have happened uh, within the system, which is fully searchable um, by uh, the type of event that's happened, the resource, the team members, the dates, and you can save those filters for later. So it's a really great way of you know, ensuring you've got a nice uh, compliant log of all the deployment steps because we really fused the deployment workflow to the actual um, productionization of, uh, of your machine learning models. And then now I'll just take you through a um, more formal approval process. So here you have a US dollar to Euro um, uh, deployment a predictor. And uh, you see here the data engineer is logged in. So Clive is logged in at the moment. He's now going to, Clive is going to submit this model for approval. If we're clicking the bottom right. It's now awaiting approval. So you see the state is updated. It's awaiting approval. And a notification appears. Activity feed to say it's now awaiting approval. So now I'll switch to a new user. Okay, so I'm the data manager. I've logged in. And this is my overview screen where I see the US dollar to Euro uh, deployment it was in draft. And you can see that's now switched to awaiting approval. You can now then see that um, uh, in this activity feed, uh, you can quickly uh, click to approve uh, that model, uh, which uh, actually you know is a really quick way of approving. But actually, what we're what we're seeing is that um, uh, larger enterprise companies where you have like mission critical models, um, basically it's important that these um, uh, approval processes are a little bit more um, kind of formal. Uh, so what we're creating is kind of like a uh, inspired by a GitHub, GitHub pull request. Actually, it will be based some of it on Git. And uh, it will allow you to see side by side the difference between the, the different um, two uh, uh, deployments, you know, your, your current and your, your, your new proposed deployment, uh, along with uh, um, documentation changes and um, uh, feedback from uh, back testing and, and you know, te tests. And, uh, and then also a uh, regulatory checkboxes to actually approve um, and, 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 and provide better governance uh, for you know, any of the, the checks which are required um, to approve the model. And those would feed back into your audit log, obviously. Um, some of those tests may want, you, you may want to uh, include in your continuous integration and, and continuous deployment um, sort of pipeline. Um, which uh, uh, is fully possible by the nature of how this is set up. So you could use the front end uh, to manage it, or you could automate parts of this process with tools like Jenkins. Okay, so I think that gives us a really nice uh, overview of the core features here on Selden Deploy. Uh, so you can see now, actually, just to finish that loop, so that was approved, and uh, now Clive has the um, authority to, to deploy this model. So it's now deploy uh, deploying, and it's been successfully deployed. And you can see that I've now received a, um, uh, an activity feed update to say that this model has been deployed and the model is now, deployment is now, uh, has a state of being active. Okay, so that's all the core features. Um, just to quickly run through, like you can manage your users, you can give them uh, different roles, uh, which is fully customizable um, on a sort of granular basis. And um, those are customizable per project. Uh, so the main roles being data scientist, data engineer, data manager. Uh, you can manage multiple clusters. So you can have seldom core clusters uh, in the cloud, on-prem, uh, in different regions, different departments, uh, manage them all through one interface, very simply by adding in the kind of uh, Kubernetes URI and, and some access tokens, uh, some API keys, etc. cetera. Um, and then, you know, you can add in different uh, Docker registries to... Um, uh, to populate the, the models inside Selden Deploy. And then actually in here specify the, the resources that those required. Okay, um, so I think this gives a pretty um, solid overview. I hope uh, you like what you see and I hope you also
has seen things that you have some really constructive feedback on because that's really the point of this is to you know um, engage with, uh, with with stakeholders um, across the board really and uh, and help us to make a better product so thank you for uh, your time for listening today and I look forward to speaking with you soon cheers